God when he went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them. The earth trembled, heavens poured down rain. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we are we're saving Ascension Day for Sunday, as we do in this parish year by year and uh, with many parts of the church. Today we uh, will read later and study in a while the Gospel for Sunday that hears in Matthew the description of the great commissioning that happens at the Ascension. We gather around the altar tonight and pause as we um, begin to approach the mountain with Christ Jesus and acknowledge to him, our risen Saviour, those times when we fall away from him. We place before him our failings, our weaknesses, and ask for his mercy and forgiveness to surround us day by day. You raise the dead to life in the spirit, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so let us pray. The God who made your people partakers in your redemption, grant, we pray, that we may perpetually render thanks for the resurrection of the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Oh, my dear friends, tonight's gospel, another good one, another good one, one of the best ones in Matthew I reckon, I love it, I love it, I do indeed. So what have we got? Um, you've, uh, if you've got your um, homework, home worship sheet, it's there on page two, or if not, uh, it's in your Bibles, um, little pew Bible, which you've got a copy of at home, uh, on uh, like page 812, and to the rest of us mere mortals, it's Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Matthew 28, 16 to 20, it'll all be beneath you uh, on the description. Right, let's read through it and uh, see what we have for Sunday. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Wow. Okay. Before we go to our questions, which we use to unpick the gospel and try and delve into it a little bit deeper, first impressions are always important. Um, what 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 comes to your mind as you hear that? Uh, how does it feel? Do you like what you have just heard? It's a it's an important question actually. How do we feel about the scriptures? Um. Well, I liked it, I'll be honest. It's not too scary this time. It's actually quite nice. Matthew's gospel is often quite scary, isn't it? But not this time. Quite good, I think, so anyway. I liked it. I think it's a, it's a, bit, it's a good one. It's a good one. That's my feeling anyway. I like it. It's positive. It's quite nice. Don't know what you think. Um, could be a little bit intimidating. I don't know. Um, could be a bit distant. I don't know. That's up to you. So what do we do? We uh, let's let, let's start to delve into this, and uh, I'll put them underneath. And I'll look at that what blogging thing there. Um, uh, the uh, six W's that we'll use to unpick this passage. It's short today, but who knows? Um, I'll try and keep it short. I won't go on too long. I know I can go on. Sorry about that. 
So we've got who, where, when, what, why, and wherefore. The, the six W's that help us unpack the uh, this gospel passage. So let's dive into it. Who? Who is in it? Well, it starts off now the 11 disciples. Ooh. That's interesting one, that, isn't it? Because just remember a few days ago, or well, just over a week ago, we had St Matthias Day. So, uh, um, the 11 disciples, all except, of course, Judas. Um, we have been jumping back and forth a little bit because we've been listening to the Acts of the Apostles. We've gone ahead in the story. And now we find ourselves just a little bit uh, um, back and forth. So, But in this instance, the 11, not quite complete. Why 11? Why 12 apostles, by the way? Why 12? Well, 12 tribes of Israel. So, but we've got, it's called the 11 disciples here, 11, 11 apostles. Remember, apostles is the one chosen, is, is, is and the disciple is one who follows. Often they get mixed up back and forth a little bit. Um, and then you've got the crowds, we've got different... We've got different characters of, of people appear in the, in the Gospels to try and draw us in. We've got the disciples here, 11 disciples or the apostles. These are the chosen ones, followers. Of course, a follower. Who's a follower? Yeah, you. Yeah. There we go. Follower. Curious, aren't we? I hope so anyway. I'll go to church. It's boring. I'll go to church. That's interesting. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. Right, anyway, enough of that. Who else have we got? The mountain to which? Jesus. Jesus. There he is. Joshua. In Hebrew, Joshua, 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 slight difference, uh, blessed one. Here we go, who is, is Jesus? Now, of course, um, uh, we know all about him. This is, uh, who is Jesus? Jesus is, we've been learning the last few days, uh, son of God. Now he is son of God, he is God, he is one with God and the Holy Spirit. Mm, so it's everything, <laughs> it's all mixed up together. He's the whole lot, as we discovered last Sunday. Okay. Um, who else have we got? Verse 17, they, that would be referring to the apostles again. Um, and then we've got 18, we've got Jesus again. Any other? Uh, we haven't got any. Oh, we do eventually get the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mm, we'll see about that in a moment. Um, that's who we're, So it's a fairly intimate scene, this. Quite an intimate scene. No, there's no one else involved. So that's who's in it. Where is it happening? Well... Again, very rarely do we ever get a good geographical reference. This one, here it is. It's in Galilee, to the mountain, which Jesus directed them. Job done. The Mount, mountain ascension, I suppose we'll call it now. But in Galilee, where's Galilee? Can you remember where Galilee is? Um, take you back to your basic geography of uh, the Holy Lands. Um, you've got uh, is, uh, Jerusalem, sort of, sort of mid, centre, mid slightly to the right bottom um galilee is up north sea of galilee then you know you've got the river jordan runs all the way down you've got galilee the sea, uh, sea of galilee and then it runs down you've got israel you've got jerusalem down here and then i'm doing it back to front i think that's the coast by the way you're looking at it um yeah oh, okay look it up look it up you can google that one i'll let you um but up north this is the this is the farming country this is the rural country the country that Jesus grew up in he knows it all knows it all that area Caesarea Philippi up on the lake up there it's far from Jerusalem and that's quite interesting it's, it's you can't get further within the cho in the land for the chosen people away from Jerusalem you then have to leave the chosen land that's an uh, interesting thing so he's back in really he's back in his home Galilee is his home turf interesting that one uh, not Jerusalem, you'd have thought so. That's where it's happening. Jerusalem, centre of everything? No, this is happening in its own turf. Where they live. They're all fishermen, a lot of them are fishermen, don't forget. So, um, okay. When is it taking place in the story, the third W? Well, the clever clogs will go at the end. Ooh. It's not the end. Well, certainly not the end of the story. This question is about how how is... Uh, the particular gospel writer interpreting the journey of Jesus, the the life and, and, and of Jesus and its meaning. Well, Matthew's gospel, Luke um, and Mark, similar uh, layout, different beginning, different ends. Um, Mark, risen job done, go home. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Matthew with this, Luke, we get we have this as well, moving on to that little extra in Luke, which happens in book two, Acts of the Apostles, we'll have that next week, um, Pentecost, um, it, it appears in the Acts of the Apostles, and then leads on to Pentecost a few days after. So, um, but in Matthew's Gospel, you know, we've had all this, we have this genealogy of Jesus, starts off with all this begatting, uh, and then uh, Joseph, and he's married to Mary, and then they have a kid called Jesus, what magi the uh, slaughter of the innocents heaven all that lot and and then we have uh, the baptism where they all at one point all four baptist all four four no all four gospels coincide and then it, we have in much the same way as mark and luke all the stuff that jesus does he travels all over the shop all over the shop all the temptations we have temptations then he does all the collecting people up and healings and miracles and you name it fantastic stuff Ends up in Jerusalem, same, similar story, uh, tale. But definitely we have, in Matthew's Gospel, we have uh, the resurrection um, is given uh, not too much prominence, um, not as much as we have to the others. With John's Gospel, loads of John, anyway, that, forget that. Um, and then we get into this bit, it says, go and tell them to go to Galilee. And here they are. Here they are. And so we are, we are the climactic part. We are almost... In Matthew's Gospel here, in awe, I think in Matthew's Gospel of the resurrection, it's kind of an overwhelming thing that we've um, that we've had. I mean, it goes straight from the res the resurrection, God, and then um, that you know they're told to go to Galilee. There's none of that stuff in the room, none of the Thomas stuff. We're kind of sitting there. Going wow, wow, and we arrive here. Well, it's interesting. Well, I wonder why. We'll work that one out in a minute. You know what happens is it moves on. So what's happening? Verse by verse. Okay, verse verse sixteen. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee. That's interesting because in verse, um, uh, oh, there was a verse. Look it up in the Bibles. Verse ten. Jesus said to them, "Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee." And they will see me. There we are. That's talking to the women. So this is we have this extraordinary jump from the, from outside the tomb to Galilee. None of the stuff of John with all the things he said and did. And none of that. We're we're in a kind of a bit of a rush, a bit like Mark, but we're adding this on to Mark's story. I don't know. How's it feel? So what's happening? So uh, they do as they're told. Interesting, do as they're told. I mean, this is this is Matthew's gospel. It's the Jewish, you know, it comes from the law, embedded in the law, the Jewish way of life, the ritual. You are God's obedient servants, um, and if uh, Jesus says do it, you do it. Why? Because He is God. So we're learning a little bit there. So they go to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. Now mountains. Oh, you should go. Yes, I love a good mountain or two. In the scriptures, a good mountain means something's going on in a mountain. What happens in a mountain? Come on. Moses, he goes up mountains, spends three times, he goes up there. Uh, what other mountains have we got? Uh, Transfiguration, mountain Transfiguration. There aren't many mountains in the Holy Lands, I have to say. Some big hills. Not what we call a sort of an oxygen job. It's you know, But it's up here. A mountain is a place which is higher up. Higher up, of course, is it not? Um, if you're going to look down on the world, remember the temptations Jesus takes to a high place. You know, you look down on the world. Um, and in those, especially in the ancients, of course, don't forget, remember the Greek and Roman mythology, you know, the, 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 everything, li the gods live up there on the mountaintop, you know. So you've got to be here. It, it, it's, a, it's a great symbol. It goes up a mountain, it lifts. And, and the picture here, especially if you're a Jew reading this, you. You recognise all of that from the Old Testament, all the things that happened on mountains. I ain't the list them out now, there's loads. I think I did the sheet last week, I think, a load, load of them. Um, but, oh, that was three days, forget that. Anyway, so we got, um, so we got, the, we got the, the, mount, the mountain, so he's lifted up, he's, he's almost lifted into a, an unearthly place, in between. You know, it's funny, when we talk about heaven, they say, where's heaven? 
instinct says look up and you've learned all of that from this you learned all of that from the, the scriptures it's part of our culture heaven and earth the reality is the earth bit we know the earth bit is this bit heaven is this bit <laughs> mm. so but the mountain we know that scripturally it means something important is going to happen transfiguration of course was the, the when jesus went up a mountain we saw that uh interesting to come up the hill to golgotha mm -hmm. so we are we are reaching up somewhere um to which jesus had directed them again there's a purpose isn't there Nothing with Jesus, certainly Matthew's gospel, happens haphazardly, does it? Everything seems to have a reason to it. They don't go just to meet up. They go in there for a reason. John's gospel, the other gospels, he meets them for uh, Luke. He meets them for different reasons. So here we go. He's heading up there, and what happens? And when they saw him, their friend Jesus, and Matthew's gospel, here we go encountering him for the first time they saw they worshipped him what is matthew telling you there well, well as a jew of course you know there is only one but you shall have, shall have only one god you can only worship one god so matthew is now showing us he's after all of the story all the 28 chapters we've had 27 and a half 28 and a half chapters he's been desperate almost to let out the secret Jesus ain't just a great bloke. He's not just a bloke chosen by God to bust the gates of death open. He's not chosen. He is. And, and Matthew's been holding in. At times he's had to rein it back because he knows that if Jesus admits the fact that he is God, then the, the, the story would have been over earlier. There would have been stonings for heresy much earlier on. Um, and so here we go. We've been building up and building up, you know, and, and Matthew is trying, this is his explanation almost as to what the res what, sorry, what the death and the resurrection was about. Got lots in the other gospels, but here, this is what this is it. He they worship him. Jesus has done a divine thing because he is divine. And God went to the cross. Ah mm, we put him there. This relationship, which, unlike John, which is the father is me, me, the father, father knows me, me, who knows me, knows the father and all, all that lot. No, no, here we go. We've got a real clear in Matthew. He's desperate to tell us all the way through that Jesus is the one who was the one preordained from the beginning of time. For he is God come amongst us. And even Matthew up to now has, hasn't quite let us in. And here he is. They worshipped him. Because that is the le that's the right and legitimate thing to do. Boy, oh boy. But look at this. Here we go. The next few words. But some doubted. All. Well, we know about doubting Thomas. Uh, we have to go in the other Gospels for that one. But some doubted. There's a real, you know, there's a, we have to make a distinction here in Matthew's Gospel of Jesus, divine God, truth, and human beings, fallible. Fallible. You know, if we're looking at the beginning of the church, you know, the church, we struggle as the church at sometimes accepting the, the, you know, the divinity of Christ. It can be a bit scary at times. And there are times when we declare ourselves as Christians, we follow him, and we do anything but. Oops, sorry, Lord. So this doubting thing, it's interesting. It's almost, it is the, it's the, it's the difference between us and Christ. Some believed, but some doubted. Eventually, we do know, and we're very grateful for uh, Luke and the Acts of the Apostles to let us in on the fact that they do all understand by the time we arrive into the Pentecost and onwards we hear of what happens with them we know that their faith is there because of probably what happens next Jesus came to them and said to them all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me 18 verse 18 all authority 
in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All authority, that means I am God. I am God. Your friend, whom you spent three years with, or however long it was, is God. Wow. They must have gone, wow, hang on, we know God? Ah, uh, that's, that's what it's about. We know God? You've been with us all this time and we know you and you know us. Look at the change in the relationship now. Before now, any time anyone's gone on a mountain, Moses has gone up a mountain, you know, he's come back burnt because you can hardly look at the face of God. God is that God is slightly distant, even if a mountain is slightly unapproachable. He's never been able to get near him. This time in Matthew's Gospel, we've just learned that all the time. Manuel, God has been with us. He's been amongst us. That Jesus is God with us. This flips religion on its head. God ain't there and we're here. No, God and us on the same plane. Wow, this is a shattering, um, earth-shattering moment. We call it the commissioning of the disciples here. It's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's not just saying, here we are, I'll give you a, a rubber stamp what you're going to say. It's giving them something quite important. Go therefore, he says, and make disciples of all, all, na all nations. Hello, all nations. I thought the chosen people were the chosen people. Let my people go. But remember right back at the beginning. Abraham. He said your descendants will be as many as the stars. I think something like that anyway. Stars and sky. That there will be. And you get these hints all the way through the Old, Old Testament. That faith in God isn't just necessarily going to be based on the people of God, the Jewish faith, that there was going to be a lifting up of faith further. Occasionally in the Old Testament, you use it, Naaman and others, you know, Nebuchadnezzar and all that, they're used by God and they accept him, but not quite, they accept what they need to do, but they don't accept him as God. But now, this, as I say, this cataclysmic change in relationship with God, God, they're us now like this, that now... God is pouring out, literally pouring himself out into the lives of all people. One day, it will arrive everywhere. 600 years and it gets to Devon. Another couple of three, another four or five hundred years on top of that. Five or however long it is sailing over the Atlantic. It gets everywhere. And this is the whole thing. This is the commission, it isn't just the rubber stamping of the, the knowledge. It is something far more tangible. It's got, it's got movement in it. That through these 12, sorry, 11, 11, <laughs> and the others around, hopefully Matthias was there at the time and the others, but through these, the truth is going to spread. People often said to you know, people say, say to me, "Oh, God's a load of nonsense in it. How can you believe that kind of stuff? It's all you know, religion, Christianity is a bit of trickery. Keeps people in order. Father says, and everyone does it. Huh, huh, really? What church you been to? <laughs> no, right? You know, people say religion is just a way of oppressing the masses and all of that lot. If that's so, how can two thousand years nobody has managed to find that it is based on?" falsehood it's based on a knowledge that God is already within us so you don't become a Christian you realize you are a Christian people say I've been converted and not been gone from leaded to unleaded <laughs> that's old isn't it no what you do, it's not real. I don't know if that's the right word, converted. I have realised. I think is far more 
of the word of someone becoming a Christian, I've realised. It's a powerful way. That God is within us. And just as they're discovering here in this passage, up in the, uh, uh, this, uh, this, this is what's happening at the, uh, the mountain here, up the hill. Jesus is saying, it's now upside down. I'm not there. I'm with you. I'm within you. And I always have been within you. And now it's time to realise that and help that to be realised by all people. Realised. All these years, I never thought of that word. There you go. If I hear that back from someone else over the net, you heard it here first. We realise that God is in us. Now, how do you do this? Now, we have a little bit now, which is, remember, Gospels all written in retrospect, 50 years after the event, or thereabouts. It says, go therefore, make disciples of the nations, help all people realise that God is within them, as he is within the disciples, baptising them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, my Old Testament, my, my New Testament tutor at Staggers, at St Stephen's house, uh, Mr Boxer was quite right. He said, it's a bit odd, wouldn't it? You'd say, you wouldn't tell people to baptise in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit when you're referring to yourself, it's almost like this is a, maybe, it's a question mark, can't answer it. Heresy alert coming up, maybe, don't know. Because <laughs> we do hear in the Acts of the Apostles, which is early church history, where people were baptised, we had it just the other day with Philip, um, they were baptised in the name of Jesus Christ, and then confirmation of the Holy Spirit comes later. It is a little later that this definition of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, emerges into the life church and the understanding of the church. It takes a little while um, for us to get that. And this is classic Trinity, isn't it? The name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I mean, now, but you can see it. Maybe. Who knows? Has that bit slipped in in the first drafts or the the, the the rewritings we're not sure however though it does describe however it happened you know if it's been designed to go there you know divinely designed to go there just in case i upset anyone that says the bible is the word of god and there's no arguments i'll just cuff me back there <laughs> it is certainly the mark of what a christian is we are baptized in the name of father son holy spirit that's what initiates that realization of God in our lives and then he goes on and this is it then there's next line is it kind of reverts they still got this Old Testament style remember in the Old Testament they had the great prophets and they, they Moses is given authority to lead Abraham is the one who will found you know um, Joseph will stand up for the people eventually it's the whole thing of having authority. Solomon anointing David, you know. And so it's great power. It says, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. What well, has Jesus commanded them? And I'm teaching them that there is a thing that what we as disciples now say, we need to consider because we are what we say can affect the realisation of people's discovery of Christ in their lives and it can destroy it or it can help it. It's a great responsibility to the apostles, the disciples, followers and us, is it not? What we say can destroy people's opportunity to approach God. It's very easy. Think as an idiot. Well, that could be the truth. However, you know what I mean. Those those words that we can use, that we as Christians can use, can sometimes destroy people's opportunity to realise God in their lives. We are there to help enable that. You know, someone asks us, you know, do you really believe in God? Yes, I do. Why? Sometimes I know, sometimes I don't. But I do know that my life is utterly different for knowing he is within me, for having realised 
is within me. Sometimes I understand what to do, what not to do. I go to church, it's a bit confusing. However, I still realise that he is within me. And it's become better. Or I've been able to cope with the things I didn't think I would. That's when you are able, when you teach. Of course, there's nothing other that Jesus had. I mean, Jesus, what did Jesus teach? I mean, I've, I've asked this many times in church. What did Jesus teach? Well, he teaches the Old Testament. He teaches the commandments and the laws. They're there. They ain't been written off. They're there. Love one another as I have loved you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with your soul. These are the two great commandments. You know, this, this is what we hold on to. Jesus didn't teach him to start up a stewardship scheme. <laughs> he taught him to love one another, to love God, to follow the scriptures, and to trust in him. Right. And now this last wonderful, wonderful sentence. And remember... I am with you always till the end of the age. It's the last words in Matthew's Gospel. Inspired words, I have to say, I would argue. Uh, Matthew decides to finish his, his account of Christ's uh, movement with us, physical movement in our world, at this point. We don't get any of the descriptions of the Ascension, We'll get that in Acts of the Apostles on uh, Sunday. But this bit, I'm with you to the end of the age. It's an extraordinary promise, isn't it? We've had loads of promises from God throughout the years, throughout the ages, millennia, tens of millennia, and we've uh, fallen away from his promise. We've, we've, we've gone astray. But this time, again, in this flip it upside down of our relationship with God this time no matter what why, what we do he is not going to abandon us and as we struggle through life he's always going to be there to the end of the age that is the end of this existence in this world which precursors the one to come I'm a great believer that you know that one day God will not waste us if you know that massive great meteorite Another one returns to Earth, the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. Another one comes and has got our number marked on it. God will not waste us. We are not to be snuffed out. It's come to draw us back to where we always should be. To the end of the age. It's extraordinary, isn't it? We look at Mars and we see where the future of our planet. We can see where we're going to be physically in billions of years' time. But God will not let us just frizzle away. He'll be with you always till the end of the age and collect us up on the way. It's an extraordinarily great promise, isn't it? And and, and for Matthew, you know, we don't have we don't go to Pentecost or anything else from that. This is where he leaves it. This is where he leaves the creation almost of the church. We have the authority of God within the of Christ within the church. As a priest, this is a bit heavy. <laughs> you know, we have the authority to, to, to speak in the name of Christ. Be careful. Um but also be bold and confident. And as a and as a disciple, as a follower. We too are called to speak for Christ and help people realise his presence in their lives. You don't have to be clever, you don't have to have fantastic great phrases, you don't have to go to theological college, you don't have degrees falling out of your, your pocket. Need your heart and to let it be pure. There we are. So there's the Great Commission. It doesn't tell us ironically about Ascension, but it is year A and we're reading Matthew's Gospel. We presume at that point, the clouds came, off he went. Um, I think we've got to be pretty confident that's exactly what happened at that point. Remember, I'm with you to the end of the age. So why is the writer including this passage? 
I think it's that great confidence. It almost opens out the end of the gospel, doesn't it? It leaves it all hanging. What's happening next? What happens next? Jesus' story with us continues. And whatever you've done today is a continuation of this story. And what you do tomorrow will continue this story until the end of the age. Um, is it is it John? John's, is it, I think it's John, get it right, who says there's so much to be written, you can't fill it in the book, and there are too many books, couldn't write enough books. It's still been written almost. Luke what goes in the Acts of the Apostles and it kind of tails off and leaves it all hanging. You know, where do you fit at the end of that? And for Matthew, too, it leaves it very open. How do we fit into that? So wherefore, what's it got to do with us? Would you have liked to have been on that mountain? Would you have liked to have been there? Do you find comfort from those words and know that I'll be with you to the end of the age? Do they stir you up a little bit? Do they challenge you? Well, if those are all the answers, well, then that's good. Wherefore, what's it got to do with us? And that's what it's all about. And don't worry, he is with us to the end of the age. Thank goodness for that. The risen Christ did come and stand amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you, then when they glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. Peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands are made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness of this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
to this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Jonathan, Robert, Nick, our bishops, your clergy and all your people whom you call to your service. Remember, Lord, also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles, Bartholomew, Mark, Anne, Mary of the Cross and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. So our risen Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Let he say the word, and I shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. So let's pray. Almighty ever living God, who restored us to eternal life in the re resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May the risen Christ um, teach you to follow him in faith, hope and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.